Hi, I'm Andrew, and this is Blaster Breakdown. Today, the Nerf Roblox Zombie Attack Viper Strike. There's no doubt this is the best looking blaster Hasbro has ever made. If you can think of one that looks better than a snake that's a sniper, let me know in the comments below, and I'll tell you that you're wrong. However, out of the box, the performance is so-so. I decided that a blaster looking this good needed performance to match, so I did something about it. Here now is a proper sniper viper. This is now a remote line HPA blaster featuring Spectre's Specs BZ in the back, controlled by a solenoid valve. It has a full metal breech, barrel, and integrated scar inside the blaster profile, and a proper magnified sniper scope up top. Depending on the input pressure, this will now fire anywhere up to 400 FPS and beyond. Before we start though, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to like if you enjoy my content. All right, let's have a look inside. Okay, here we are. I thought we'd start at the back because this is where the air starts. So first of all, this quick disconnect piece, I've cut a little semicircle hole here and of course on the left side of the shell and that just clamps over this fitting. So when the shell is done up, that holds it nice and secure. It's not gonna move back and forth, left and right or in and out. So the other end of this is a regular six millimeter push fit connection with some hose pressed in. That brings us up to the solenoid. So this is a Mac clone solenoid. It's a bit smaller than the AirTac clones that I usually use. It's not as tall as the AirTac one. One biggish difference is that the ports aren't all in line in the same plane. So we've got one and then two and three. And this normally open configuration, the inlet has to be at 90 degrees to the outlet. So that's just the way it is. So air comes in this port goes out through this port to the back of the Specs BZ. So that's the normal configuration without any power applied. When we do apply power to the solenoid, it switches position, closes off the inlet from the air supply and vents the rear of the Specs BZ to atmosphere. And of course, that action triggers the quick exhaust diaphragm in the back of the Specs BZ to flip position and dump the air through the front. So that's quite straightforward. Air comes in through the solenoid to the Specs BZ. By default, the Specs BZ is pressurized. When we pull the trigger, apply electrical current, solenoid flips positions, that closes off the air inlet, vents the Specs BZ to atmosphere, which fires the dart. And that brings us to the front of the Specs BZ. Now this coupling piece has a 9 16 inner diameter. So I've got a piece of 9 16 brass, just a thin ring with 17 30 seconds brass glued into it. And the amount of 17 30 seconds I've got is about that long, so that when the breech is fully closed, I've got about 10 millimeters or so of overlap. Now, telescoping over that, I've got this length of 9 16 brass. So when the breech is fully open, the 9 16 doesn't come close to the front of the coupling piece of the Specs BZ. When the breech is fully closed, you can see it's long enough then that we've got that overlap. Now, that brings us to the pusher tip. Now, this is from a worker kit for. Prophecy or Retaliator, and I got it in red, of course, to match the rest of the blaster. And this tip is normally screwed onto a bolt that's about that long that goes into a plunger tube in a typical Springer configuration. What I've done is unscrew the rear component, and then this 9 16 brass is glued over the top of the male thread at the rear of this pusher tip. The pusher tip then just fits into the bolt sled using this pin in the usual way. So pop the pin out, get rid of the plastic bolt. And this piece then just slotted in really easy. It was very simple to do. I was very pleased that that worked out. Now that brings us then to what was probably the trickiest thing to get right in this build, fitting this polycarbonate worker piece that can be used in a number of blasters, but it's not exactly the right shape for this blaster. So what I needed to do was just by trial and error, work out which of these parts I needed to cut away, which I needed to shape, as well as grinding away the inside of the front of the blaster to fit this was really the trickiest part of this build. When I was happy with the shape, I then used a bed of epoxy putty to fix it in place. And that had to be exactly right. It couldn't be too far forward or I wouldn't get a seal when the breech was closed. It couldn't be too far backward or these lips would hit the front of the magazine. It couldn't be angled or too far left or right because then the tip of the pusher wouldn't fit between these guide lips. And it did take me a couple of goes until I had the position exactly right. But it's there now and it's, it's working perfectly. The front of this piece has two screws, top and bottom, that 
loosen and tighten this piece and that clamps onto the barrel when it's inserted. So loosen, stick your barrel in and then tighten and that holds it nice and firm. This is the barrel from, again, that Prophecy kit. It's 310 millimetres in length, which seems long until you stick it in this blaster and you realise you've got heaps of space to work with. So much space, in fact, that I've got a worker adjustable scar fitted on the end and it still barely reaches the snake's open mouth. There's no faux barrel or anything inside this part. It's just kind of got these ridged lines and that's slightly wider than the typical 19 millimeter faux barrel. And what I've done at the front here is just a few wraps of electrical tape at this point, which lines up with this molding here to clamp this barrel and center it just a bit tighter so we don't have any wobble back and forth left and right. So the last thing then was powering the solenoid. And I decided to store this little LiPo up the front here. It's a 3S LiPo, so that's giving me around 12 volts or so to run the solenoid. I found it would fit quite neatly in the front here. And the main reason I chose to store the battery up here is because I can more easily remove this front piece to access the battery, to remove it when not in use, give it a charge without having to disassemble the whole blaster. And this has just got a regular XT30 connector. So that sits nicely as it is. And then I've got the wires running under here. I've drilled some holes and fed the wires through. They go underneath the mag well, underneath the magazine release piece and through to the trigger. And here I've mounted the trigger on a bed of 3D filament using one of those pen devices that lets you draw the shape you need and then a couple of screws holds this switch in place. So now the trigger will activate this switch. Pulling the trigger closes the circuit and energizes the solenoid to switch position. In fact, because I've got the LiPo connected, you might be able to hear. And I can certainly feel here the solenoid switching position to change ports when I pull this trigger. So I'll connect my ear now and show you what this looks like. And this is set quite low, about 20 PSI. So at the moment, air's connected, the solenoid is open, so the Specs BZ is pressurized. When I pull the trigger, you hear the air dumped. I could feel the air coming out the front here. And when I release the trigger, the solenoid repressurizes. So while the trigger is held, the input is closed off. There's no pressurized air inside the Specs BZ. When I release, it'll instantly or almost instantly repressurize again. And of course, if I close the breech, the only way the air will get out is through that dart that we loaded in earlier. And off it goes. Now, the final thing I've done is this might be an oversight on the part of Hasbro, but I realized this scope isn't actually a scope it's just a tube it's just a plastic tube with a little crosshair in it i was a bit surprised in a blaster that looks like a sniper that we didn't have a proper magnifying scope but um yeah i think someone's going to lose their job about that oversight so instead i got a proper scope so this is a bushnell three to nine times magnification and luckily that fits quite neatly inside where this one used to just got a bit of electrical tape to help in clamping this and when I close up the shell a pair of screws front and back will hold that nice and tight and I can get some proper sniper action going. Now putting this back together is really straightforward my magazine piece is in there I'm not going to bother with the jam door so that would sit up here I actually like being able to look in and see if I've got a dart loaded or maybe my magazine is empty in between shots so I'm going to leave that aside. The other thing I haven't done is attach the priming handle on the left side. When these go in, they're very, very difficult to remove. I've got the right side one attached, and that's how I would normally prime the blaster with my right hand. I'm happy for that to stay in place. But if I attach the left-hand side one, that would make it very, very difficult to open the blaster again to work on it. So that one I'm not going to use either. But for the rest of it, this just clamps together in a very straightforward manner.
Okay, that's the main part of the blaster I put together. That scope is held nice and firm. I did lose one screw port right at the back here just because of the space I needed to make for the solenoid. You can see inside the bolt slit is sliding back and forth very nicely and with our magazine in, it's perfect. Now, of course, I'm using my regular hex head or socket cap screws. These are M2.6 12 millimeter length throughout the blaster, which is nice not to have to worry about different screws. These certainly make it much easier when I'm assembling and disassembling the blaster to work on it. Don't have to worry about stripped screw heads. Fitting the left side of the barrel piece, just got this tab that goes into a slot at the front here to worry about. Otherwise, I just make sure my wires are sitting flat. That looks pretty good. And then slot that in and nice. It's a secret one underneath this bipod. Okay, so I know the battery and the wiring is all nice. This is about where the scar is clamped tight. And there we are. There's my priming handle on the on the right side. Magazine release, trigger. The trigger well is a bit small. My fingers are fairly fat, but it just fits in there. The grip is, again, quite small, but that's what you get with snakes. So there's my air inlet at the bottom. Sniper scope looks good and, yep, nice and firm. Okay, so I'm ready to take this out and get some FPS numbers and do some target practice. Okay, let's get some numbers now. So I've got uh, six Worker Red Gen 2s, and I'm starting with really low PSI. I'm starting down at 20 PSI. Let's see how it goes. Okay, it looks like 20 PSI might do me for super stock events with the 150 FPS cap. Let's bump the pressure up now to 50 PSI. Another six workers. Okay, that's pretty nice. Let's go up to 75 PSI. Okay, creeping up to the 300s, let's try 100 PSI. Pretty nice. Let's go crazy for 150 PSI now. Well, that's a nice number to finish on. Clearly we saw diminishing returns above about 75 PSI, but you get an idea of how we can adjust our performance based on the input pressure. Let's get some accuracy results now. Okay, here we are, 50 feet from the target as per usual. I've got 10 worker red Gen 2s ready to go. My air pressure is set to 50 PSI input, so we should be looking around mid 200s as far as FPS goes, so I think we can expect pretty good accuracy at this range. But first, I need to assume the position.
Okay, that's pretty good. Let's have a look at some gameplay footage now. This was taken at the October Superstock event of the Brisbane Area Nerf Group. The cap for this event was 150 FPS, so I had the pressure way down at 20 PSI. It was a lot of fun to run at this event. I think it got a good reception from the crew on the day. At 150 FPS, some of the longer distance tags were more luck than anything, but like I say, a lot of fun to use. Please leave any questions or comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.